as always, Chief Ben Raymond, Shreveport Police Chief. A pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you for your time. Certainly. Thank you for having me. Chief, you're getting together with the U.S. Attorney, with the Sheriff, with the DA, with many others. Another effort, a joint effort to target violent criminals. What's changing this time? Well, I don't know so much that that anything's changing. I think this is just another opportunity for us to put together um, you know, law enforcement agencies from throughout Northwest Louisiana and for the district attorney's offices to come together and determine who's going to be the best, uh, what's going to be the best venue for prosecuting uh, some of these violent offenders to make sure that they stay off our streets, you know, for an extended amount of time and, and are not able to contribute to this violent crime. Once you involve the federal government, I, what is not being done in your mind on the local level or in the minds of law enforcement that the U.S. attorney, the federal government has to be more involved? Well, the federal government is not inundated with as many cases as, as the state uh, prosecutorial office is. So they can focus on those cases that they think are going to most affect crime in a local area. That's really part of their, their Project Safe Neighborhoods initiative, where they help reduce gun violence in, in an area by taking the cases that are that are uh, good and ripe for a federal prosecution through their jurisdiction. And so it's not so much that the Cato DA's office is not doing a good job, but they have to take every case that comes before them, whereas the federal prosecutors can be selective. They can take only the best cases, only the cases that involve, you know, really the violent criminals and the people that, that need to come off the streets. Is it is it in your mind or perhaps in the mind of other law enforcement officials in the area that the Cato DA's office is because of the caseload o- overwhelmed, too strong a word, overloaded, a little bit behind? What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, and Sheriff Prater mentioned it yesterday, it's really the system. The, the system, you know, needs repair. I, I'm not an expert at the, at the Department of Corrections and the prosecutorial system, but you have so many cases going before the CAT ODA that you literally cannot take every one of them to trial. You know, there's an extended time frame just to take the, the few cases that they are able to take to trial. So many cases have to be dealt with in other manners. Whereas in the federal jurisdiction, if they say we're going to take this case, they're going to trial with it. You don't you don't generally see a plea bargain uh, at the federal level. So if they, they accept a case, um, it's a very, very winnable case. And if a person gets sentenced to five years in jail, they spend five years in jail. You don't get good time and uh, two for one and some of the things that you get in the state system that are just part of the process because they do have so many um people coming through, you know, the, the Caddo DA system. Your, your, your answer to this is probably, well, ask the DA, but you may be able to at least uh, give us a little insight. A little insight. How does the DA feel about this? Well, to my knowledge, he's, he's excited about it. He's, he's happy to have any assistance. Uh, you know, anytime you can pull a caseload from the Caddo DA's office, I don't I don't imagine they're going to complain about it. They, they still have plenty of cases to prosecute. And remember that many crimes don't even fit the federal jurisdiction mandate. So firearms laws do because they're they're interstate. I mean, you know, firearms come from outside our area. They're not made in Shreveport, which allows them to be prosecuted at the federal level. But many cases, uh, rapes and homicides and things like that, you know, those those have to stay within the state court system. Those are not even prosecu- prosecuted on the federal level. Chief? So um, they have to be selective in what cases they can take. Chief, the sheriff's been very critical of the catch and release program. I know you have had concerns about it, too. Um, that that is the focus. That's the that's the main problem here. We have to fix that. I mean, if, if criminals know you're going to catch them and let them go right back on the streets, nothing's going to change, regardless if it's the feds or the DA. How do you answer that? You, you know, I agree that it's a problem. I don't know that I have an answer. I know that the police generally take the brunt of any time crime increases as to why don't you do anything, why haven't you done more. And the reality is, if you look at many of the people committing these violent crimes, We've arrested them on numerous occasions. I feel like we're doing our job, and, I, and we can prove that we're doing our job. The problem is the system is failing, and I don't, I don't want to where? point a where finger. Is the, where is the point... system failing? Where? What can we do to fix the, the part of the system that's failing? And is this going to well, help do that? I think you have to go back to the end result of the system. The end result is someone commits a, a violent crime or a, a, a a felony, and they serve time in prison. Well, the prisons are overloaded. So if I get someone else that committed a violent crime, let's just say I've got a prison that holds 100 people, and I've got 100 bad actors in there, and I just convict somebody of a rape or a murder or an armed robbery, my choices are I either let one of those other 100 people out of that prison because it's at capacity, or I take this individual and I don't put them in prison. And that's what you're at, but, but on a much larger scale. We literally have too many people in our correctional system. 
They're not being, you know, many people spend years and years in prison. The prisons fill up and there's no room for more people. And so I don't I don't know what the answer to solve that problem is, but it's a, it's a st- systemic issue, not not a local issue. But criminal justice reform was supposed to address that. Um, has that not worked? I think criminal justice reform in some ways is the reason that you have uh, some of these violent criminals out on the streets. That, that The attempt was let's put people out, let's get some people out of jail that we think have a chance to rehabilitate. And this is not a this is not a um, uh, fault of those that, that did make mistakes and, and have rehabilitated themselves. The problem is, obviously, it's very difficult to determine, is this person going to be able to become a an effective citizen, or are they going to go back to a life of crime? And obviously, we haven't got that equation right yet, because we see a number of people um, that, have, that have been let out of jail or, or prison early, and they go right back to committing more crime. And then the police are dealing with them again. So are you confident this is going to help? Given the problems, given the difficulties that you just sort of sort of explained to us, do you think this will help a little bit involving the feds, et cetera, et cetera? Yes, most definitely, because, because I know from experience that when a person is convicted in that federal system, and again, most of the gun crimes carry at least five-year penalties, some 10 years or more, that's exactly how long that individual will be off the streets. Um, so that, 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 you know, it's a, it's a large window to help us reduce our violent crime.